Hello everyone, this is Sam Spade and welcome to another Coding Fundamentals in GML tutorial. In this tutorial, we'll be talking about the basics of asynchronous code. And I do want to have a disclaimer here. I don't actually work very much with asynchronous code, so I am going to keep it very basic and just try to give a general idea of how it works. But first, let's talk about synchronous code. This is what you're going to write most of the time. It's a sequence of instructions that runs line by line. It's executed in order and no other code runs until the line before it. And this is why things like infinite loops will freeze your program. We talked about this more in the loops tutorial. So here's a short diagram of synchronous code. You can think of each rectangle here as a line or a block of code or an event or whatever you want, but it runs. This has to finish before this runs, which has to finish before this runs, which has to finish before this runs. So for example, if this is a while loop and it never stops, your program just freezes or hangs. It never goes on. Now, obviously, this presents some problems, especially if your program is going to interact with anything else, such as networking over the web or loading information in or something like that. Because let's say you send some type of request over the internet. Well, if you have to wait for that response before the next code can continue, then your entire program is frozen. Asynchronous code is when the occurrence of events is independent of the main program flow. It is very rare in Game Maker Studio 2. And there's an asterisk there because in fact, there are a couple areas, primarily again, when you're interacting with other programs or programs outside of yours, where you might actually write a lot of it. And that is with loading things in and networking or anything related to the internet. So here's our asynchronous diagram. So our synchronous code, again, runs line by line, but let's say you do a function call or something that starts some type of asynchronous event. So that code goes over here and starts running on its own time. It's not going to block your code and it's going to finish at some point. And when it is finished in Game Maker Studio 2, at least it's going to fire some type of event. And then your synchronous event is going to happen and the rest of your code is going to run. So for example, again, let's say you click a button to connect to some type of network. So that starts the network request and the rest of your code keeps running. Then once it connects or doesn't connect, uh, it finishes and comes back in and fires your networking event. That event happens and then the rest of your code runs. And as we talked about before, obviously this is very important for many situations uh, when you're working with a program outside of yours. You don't want your entire program to freeze while you're waiting to connect to some type of network, for example. You want your program to keep being interactive and that networking request to run in the background. So here are some important ideas to keep in mind when working with asynchronous code. You cannot control when or even if the asynchronous event that you want to happen will fire. Therefore, your code must work regardless of when or if it ever fires. You can think of them, in fact, a lot like a keyboard event or some type of input event that you don't control. You don't want your entire program to be frozen until someone pushes a spacebar. You want your program to work when or if that spacebar is ever pushed, then you want it to interact. So now let's talk about Game Maker Studio specific asynchronous things. Game Maker Studio 2 has specific asynchronous events. Most or all of these events are triggered by a function in your code. And I say all with a question mark because like I said, I don't use a whole lot of asynchronous events because I don't do any networking. Um, I read through the documentation. It appears like they all do, but I might be wrong about that. But again, most or all of these events are triggered by a function in your code. When the asynchronous thing completes, it's going to trigger that asynchronous event. And this is the next thing. Most or all of these events use the async load variable, which is a map. But what that map holds is different depending upon the event that is triggered. One example of an asynchronous function call that I do use, and I think most people will use at some point, is audio group load. If you use the built-in function audio group load in your code, the asynchronous code controlled by GameMaker is going to start over here. And when it finishes, it's going to trigger the async save load event. And that async save load event will have the async load map. After this event completes, the rest of your code will run. So I've pulled up the manual so we can look at it a little bit more. So we have the asynchronous section right here. We're going to go to the events list. We're going to go to save and load, audio groups. And here we go. When working with audio groups, you can load or unload them from memory using the functions audio group load and audio group unload. So we're just going to load it. And then it tells you that it's going to trigger the asynchronous event, this specific asynchronous event, save load. And if it's an audio event, it's going to return the async load variable with the following two things, type 
in group ID. And then we can use that in our code in the async event to do whatever we want. One thing I want to point out is if you're ever going to use asynchronous events, and really this is true for all of GameMaker, but especially with asynchronous events, you have to look it up in the manual and you have to see A, what function call is going to call that event, and B, what the async load variable is going to contain. Because again, it's different for every single event. So for example, audio playback gives you the same async load variable right here, but now it contains different information and different keys. So you've always got to look it up so you know what that variable contains. Okay, let's switch over to GameMaker Studio 2. So here is our asynchronous object. It has a create event. I'm just loading in an audio group and a sound effects group. You can actually see that I've added these right over here. Arponauts, that's the song. Explosions, that's the sound effect. And then I have start time equals current time. We have our async load event where we take our async load variable, we get the type, the group ID, and then I'm just tracking this elapsed time so you can see that it varies from run to run. I'm printing out the elapsed time between when we call the function over here and when our async load event fires. And then depending upon the group ID that is returned, whether it is audio group music or audio group sound effects, we're gonna play either the music or the sound effects. And actually, I'm not even gonna use a breakpoint here. I will use it over here. I'm not gonna use a breakpoint here. We're just gonna run it and see what happens. Okay, so we're here. We've got our async load variable. We're going to load them in. So type audio group loaded, group ID, one, time elapsed, four, seven, three, nine. I believe these are milliseconds. So now we come down here, the switch statement. That is gonna be the music. And you can hear the music playing. All right, we run it again, and then it fires again. Let me actually mute my computer here. So both of these have fired. Now I wanna demonstrate something else. So I'm just gonna run this a couple times, and then I'm gonna to skip to that point, but I'll show you the various uh, times between when these things are run. Okay, so we run it once, and we got time elapsed 25, time elapsed 26. Now let's run it again and see what we get. Okay, so we've run it again, and we got time elapsed 30 and 30. And every time I run this, it's going to be something different. And that's the key point, the key, one of the key takeaways from asynchronous events. As we talked about here, you cannot control when or even if they finish. It could finish here, it could finish here, it could finish here, it could finish way down here. You don't know when that event is going to finish, and your code has to be able to handle it regardless of when it does. So, in summary, asynchronous code is the occurrence of events independent of the main program flow. In GML, you start them with a function call, which will, when they finish, trigger an async event, which uses a map or variable that is a map named async load. And most importantly, you cannot predict when or even if the async event will happen, and your code has to account for this. As always, the links in the slide will be below, as well links to the slides themselves and the source code. And as I mentioned in this tutorial, the manual really has to be consulted here. I mean, you should always be consulting the manual, but with asynchronous events, there is information that you cannot know without reading the GameMaker Studio 2 manual. Specifically, you cannot know what the async load returns without looking it up in the manual because that same variable is used for every single asynchronous event, but what it contains is different. So the manual really is required reading here. And that's it. Thanks for watching.